Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of A Gardener's Journey Homestead. I'm Barbara, welcome to my kitchen. And on this video, we are going to make a loaf of sourdough bread. Now I did a video, it may have been a year ago, when I talked about how to make a sourdough starter, which is the first step. You must have a sourdough starter if you're gonna do sourdough bread. So I'll link this video up here if you wanna know how to make a sourdough starter. Um, but today we're gonna actually make a loaf of sourdough bread because you guys have been asking and saying, hey, I can do yeast bread, I can't do sourdough. But the sourdough I've gotten, y'all know I've been struggling with the yeast bread, but I'm finally getting it. So I thought I would do a video if you're interested on how to make a sourdough sandwich loaf bread. So that's what we're going to do on this video. I'm going to walk you through step by step so you can see the process. So for those that are brand new to me, I'm in Tennessee in zone 7B. And um, here on this channel, we talk about all things gardening, homesteading, cooking from scratch. We do all, all of the things, right? So I take you in my kitchen, I take you um, outside and we do all the things. <laughs> and so on today's video, we're talking about sourdough. And so if you've never done sourdough bread, I know and I've heard that it can be intimidating. It's interesting because for me, um, it has been less intimidating than doing the yeast bread, which I know a lot of people say is really, really odd. But the first step is that I made my own sourdough starter. Now, you can certainly venture out and do your own sourdough starter. It's completely possible. So watch my video. And if you have questions, let me know. Or you can buy a, a sourdough starter. You can get it from a bakery. You can buy it dehydrated. You can buy it freeze dried or you can buy it in liquid like from other sources. Now. Here's a question. I've thought about making sourdough starter available in 2024. If that is something that y'all interested in and going to buy it, let me know. Don't tell me it's a good idea and you ain't finna do nothing, okay? <laughs> like, are you really serious about doing it? Because if, if the only thing that's keeping you from doing sourdough bread is you can't get your starter and you're like, look, I don't have to have my own that I did with myself, I'll, I'll purchase it, then let me know because I'm thinking about doing that. I know there's some other farms that do it. And so I've encountered plenty of people who's asked me questions about sourdough. So if you want sourdough starter um, and you'd be willing to buy it, let me know. So um, I may make that available in 2024. I'm almost positive I'm going to make it available, but I'm telling y'all first. Okay. But anyway, so the step I'm going to start with is actually I just got my starter out of the refrigerator and I want to show you what it looks like because I've, again, I've heard from many of you that like, mm, it don't look right. Look, I keep my sourdough in my refrigerator. I've had my sourdough starter since I started this. It's probably been, this might be year two or year and a half. I can't remember what month I, I did my sourdough, but I keep it in my fridge. Usually I'm baking bread every week. Now I have not baked sourdough bread in a couple of weeks. So, but I did feed my starter last week. So typically, um, I'm baking bread every week, so it's getting fed anyway. But if for some reason I'm not baking bread, then I try to feed my starter at least once a week. But there have been plenty of times when we've gone out of town, hence Australia, it hasn't been fed for two or three weeks, right? And it's still good. But let me show you what it looks like, right? I haven't done anything to it, <clears throat> but you can kind of see it has like this liquid on top. But when I smell it, it smells fine. So I'm going to discard. That means I'm going to take half of what's in here. And either you can save the discard and make other recipes that are sourdough discard recipes. Meaning the recipes that call for sourdough discard means the sourdough does not have to be active in order to use it. So you can save it. And so I have a jar in my refrigerator that I keep discard in. Or you can just toss it, you know, in the sink, trash, whatever you want to do. Again, I always have discard. So a lot of times once my jar is full of discard and I haven't done anything with it, I just get rid of mine. And that's what I'm going to do today. So I'm going to get rid of half of this and then we're going to feed our starter. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I've discarded the sourdough. You can see it's like this much. It was up here. I discarded half. So you can kind of see a little bit there. So we're going to put it on the scale, tear it out, make sure that it's on grams. And then for me, I feed 50, 50 grams of flour, 50 grams of water. The flour I'm using is bread flour. Um, I use King Authors. It's the only one that I like and I can guarantee results with. So I'm going to add 50 grams of flour. Thank you. 
Okay, perfect. So that's 50 grams of flour, and then I'm going to add 50 grams of water. Oh, and oh, this is another thing. So yeah, you want to do equal measurements, but again, I do it a little bit different because I like the benefits of sourdough, but I don't like mine to be extra sour and tangy. So for me, I add 10 more grams of water than I do flour. But if you read any books, go through any recipes, they're always going to tell you equal parts flour, equal parts water. I did that in the beginning, but again, you know, once you have a recipe, you kind of adapt it to your own um, liking. And so for me, I don't like the sour, sour taste. So when you add more water, it makes it less sour. So I'm actually going to do 60 grams of water. Okay. So then that's done. And we're going to stir it with a sourdough. This is like a, a spatula type of thing. It's, you know, specifically for sourdough because it makes it easy to get in here. But I've done this with a knife. I've done it with a fork. So... You're just starting out. You don't have to buy any tools. You can do it with a fork. You can do it with a knife. And you're just going to mix it all in. It's going to look like that, like some thick, thick, thick pancake batter. Now, I'm going to actually transfer this to a new clean jar. I change jars maybe, I don't know every four or five feedings to get a clean jar. And then for the purpose of this demonstration, I think it'd be good for you guys to see where it started and then where it's gonna rise to. So let me get a clean jar. Okay, not that the jar was dirty, was dirty in terms of not clean. Just it's already, you know, you can see it's looked caked down, caked around the top just because sourdough has been in here. But we're just gonna put it in a nice clean jar so that way you guys can really see where it is and what the texture is like. Again, it's going to be like a thick pancake batter, and the smell is just like a clean flour smell. If your sourdough smells rank or bad, then it probably is bad. It should not have a bad smell at all. It should be just like a nice, clean flour smell, if that makes sense. Okay. So, this is what it looks like now so the jar is clean you can see kind of where it is you can see what the texture is like and i'm going to move it all around so you can see like it's not active now there's no bubbles so i'm going to sit this on my counter i'm going to pop the lid on it i'm not going to tighten the lid i'm just sitting it on there and i'm just it's just going to sit in the counter and let it do its thing now because i feed my sourdough starter regularly mine only usually takes probably three or four hours to get active. Now, when I first started doing sourdough, it took much longer than that because again, the more you use your sourdough, the quicker it's gonna become active. Um, also, the temperature in your house, just like when you're doing yeast bread, um, has an effect on your sourdough. So if your house is really cold, it's gonna take longer to activate. So you can put it in the oven with the light on, not the oven on. You can pop it on top of your refrigerator where there's more heat. If you have a, have a wood burning stove, you can put it near the wood burning stove. I use like a seedling um, heat mat and just pop mine on there to get it to activate quicker or just to make it warmer. So you can do all of those things or you can just sit and wait. Okay, so it's gonna hang out, do its thing. I'm gonna come back and show you what it looks like when it's active and then we're gonna get into making the bread. I'll be back. One more thing before I go. I want you to see the spatula. One of the things when working with sourdough, as soon as you get done with your utensils, you wanna go ahead and wash them. Do not put this in your sink and let it sit without washing it and running because this stuff gets really, really hard and it's much more of a workout to get it clean than if you just do it right away. Same thing with your jar. Like I'm gonna let this soak, spray, so it'll be easy to get it out. The sourdough hardens really, really fast. So pro tip. Okay, y'all, I'm back. It is the next, it's two days later from when I first started shooting, shooting this video. Y'all know what happens, life be lifing, okay? So my starter did rise, but I wasn't able to finish the whole process with you on camera. So I redid the starter. So we're gonna pick up as if it's the same day because I've done nothing else except redo what I've already showed you right, right back here, okay? But it's the next day. You can see new hair, new clothes, all the good stuff, okay? So let me show you 
and it only took my starter three hours to rise last time and this time again i feed my starter usually once per week and so the more that you do your starter the more active it's going to be but let me show you you can see where we started it was like right in here you can see how much it has risen so the starter is active you can see the bubbles there and you can also see all of those bubbles there that means the starter is active and ready to go. Now your starter will rise and the ideal is for you to use it when it's at its peak, when it's risen, before it falls. It's gonna rise and it's going to fall, right? So obviously you can see that right there. So we're gonna get ready and bake some bread. So the bread that I'm gonna show you today is a sandwich loaf bread um, made out of sourdough. And let me show you the book. I've showed this book before. Artisan Sourdough Made sim Simply Made Simple by Emily Rafa. You can get that um, on Amazon. This is a great book for beginners on sourdough. She walks you through how to, how to do a starter, and there's plenty of recipes for active sourdough starter as well as discard. So I highly recommend this book. So the recipe that we're using is on page 65, and it's soft honey whole wheat sandwich bread. Now I have done this thousands of, not thousands, hun, mm, not hundreds. I've done it a lot of times, probably close to, I don't know, at least 50 or 60, because I, I do this bread every single week. Um, and I've adapted it, um, but even when I followed it, just like the recipe, it was still good, but I've just adapted little tweaks here and there over time for the way that I like it. So I'm gonna show you the way that I do it. So in case if you get this book and you follow this recipe, mine's gonna be a little bit different, but not that, that much off, okay? I've um, used it several different times. It makes one loaf of bread. Um, there's other recipes in here for um, rye, like any other types of um, breads that you may want, cinnamon raisin swirl, all the things. Now, I know traditionally a lot of sourdough people will do the boule style, which is like the round dome shape. Let me see if I can show you a picture like that a lot of sourdough people and i've done that before too if you guys want to see that i mean it's the same concept in terms of feeding your starter getting it active it's just a different recipe different shape different technique it's a little bit more complex but i've done this before but my family we don't really use this bread i would do this if i'm having company over because it's good to slice it and do like some butter and a dipping oil um, but for us to use like just everyday use um, we don't use it that much, so we just do the sandwich bread because for that, we can do toast, we can do sandwiches, and it's just a little bit more practical for our family. But if you like this style bread and you want that shape, if you want me to do a video on that one um, and feel like you still need to see it one more time, let me know and I'm happy to do it, okay? But for today, we're going to do a sandwich loaf bread. I've made this so many times, I know the recipe by heart. So you're going to take one cup of milk. I'm just using this big measuring cup because that's the one that I had, and why get another one dirty? But um, I usually warm this up in the microwave for like 40 seconds. You just don't want it to be chilly cold out of your refrigerator. So you can pour it and let it sit if you don't want to use a microwave, or pop it in the microwave for like 40 seconds. So one cup of this plus two tablespoons. Okay, so I'm just gonna pour this in the bowl. So let's see if I can get you a shot of the bowl. Okay, y'all, it's the best I can do. So I got the milk in there, and then we're gonna need 3 fourths cup of active sourdough starter. So I'm gonna use this as a ballpark. And you can see as that starter's coming out what it looks like. So instead of like thick um, batter, again, it has all the holes in it. It's bub bubbly, so we're just gonna pour this in here like so, like that. Okay, and so then we're gonna add one and a half um, teaspoons of salt. Which is nothing but a half of a tablespoon. Three teaspoons equal a tablespoon, so let's see. Um, yeah, there we go. Y'all, I can't see. Okay. So, 
one and a half teaspoons of salt, and then two tablespoons of oil. Um, I use olive oil to me. I found that that's the best um, one that I like. I used to use like a grapeseed oil or avocado oil, but olive oil to me is what I like. So two tablespoons of that, and I use a good quality olive oil. I get this from Azure Standard. Then we need two tablespoons of warm water. Um, so let me go grab that. That's the one thing I forgot to bring over here. Okay, so that's the two tablespoons of warm water. Like you just don't wanna put anything like just um, straight cold in here um, because the warmer it is, the, the quicker it'll be to activate and the cold won't shock it. Um, so we've done the milk, we've done, and the milk that I'm using is Ripple, which is a, um, like a, not a soy base, it's pea protein, but it's not, I mean, you can use full fat milk, but I don't like or don't use or drink full fat milk. So you can use whatever milk that your family drinks. Um, we've done the milk, salt, oil, water, and now we need honey. Now the recipe calls for two tablespoons of honey. I put four tablespoons of honey just because that's the way I like it. And no, even with the four tablespoons of honey, it's not really, um, what you might call it, it's not real sweet like it just gives it a nice you can't even taste the the sweetness so let's do four tablespoons of this i'm using a raw organic honey berry wildflower wild flower i've used orange blossom i've used just regular organic raw honey i like this um wild berry flower the best and again, I get this from Azure Standard. If you've watched my Azure Standard hauls, you've seen me buy this and use it. Whoa, ah, I almost slipped out of my hand. Okay, usually I use a spoon, but okay. That's the one thing about that. It's just so hard to get it to not go down the side of the jar. Okay, so we're gonna stir these things together and just mix it all in. The honey, the water, the milk, the salt, and the oil. We're just blending it all up. And then it calls for four cups of flour. Now the recipe, I think you use two and two, two whole wheat and two um, all purpose, I think. I can't remember because it's been a while since I followed the recipe, but this is what I do. I do three cups of um, bread flour and then one cup of all purpose. That's what I do. Um, that's the combination that I like. If you wanted more wheat, then you can put wheat in there. So I'm gonna do just three cups of bread flour. And I was surprised that on one of my bread videos, I was talking about the difference between a dry measuring cup and a wet measuring cup. I thought it was just me, but it was several of you that commented or emailed me and said, hey, I did not know that. So, you know what? Just when you think that you are behind and the most ignorant one in the bunch, you find out that other people don't know sometimes too, right? So one cup of all purpose. Now, the most accurate way, obviously to measure this is with grams. Do I ever do grams? No, I don't. So you can do as the book says, and not as I do, if that makes you feel more comfortable, but I do it this way just because it's easier. And now I'm just gonna mix it all together. You can see how it's coming together. So I kind of get it all incorporated first, and then I'll kind of go in here with my hands and get it all kind of incorporated together. Now, because I've done this several times, I know that it's a little bit more wet than what I would like or what I would normally do. And again, it's so interesting because as you see me doing this video with the sourdough, obviously you can probably tell I'm way more confident doing this because I've done it a lot of times. And so I know exactly what the dough 
um, should feel like um, or the way that I prefer it. It should be, in my opinion, a little bit more dry and a little bit, it's already kind of shaggy like. Now, if I lift it like this, will it still be fine? It will be. Um, but usually it's a little bit more dry than this. So I'm going to add just a little bit more flour. Now, is this in the book? Mm -mm, it's not in the book. But <laughs> because I've done it, I know. So I'm just going to add a little bit more. I'm not measuring it. I'm not weighing it. I'm just adding it to get it a little bit more dry. And so I'm just incorporating. I'm not kneading it. I'm just really just make, making sure that all the stuff is mixed in together um, just like that. So it's going to be a shaggy looking dough. We're going to cover this for 45 minutes to an hour with a damp towel and then I'll come back and show you the next step. Okay guys, so it's been about 50 minutes. You can see this is what it looks like. So it was real shaggy like. If you can feel this consistency, it's much softer. So I'm going to see if you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to take it and fold it in and turn the bowl as I do it. I'm going to do that maybe, I don't know, seven or eight times. I'm just putting it in a ball like that. So just to try to show you one more time, I just folding it over and turning my bowl, folding it over and turning my bowl. That's just, again, um, maneuvering the dough and you can see that it's much, much easier and smoother to maneuver than it was before. So you do that after 45 minutes to an hour and then we're going to let this rise overnight. This is what you call your bulk um, your bulk rise, and again, it's going to be overnight. If you were doing it in the daytime, probably six to eight hours. But what we're looking for, it'll be in my morning because it's late at night now. It will be much bigger than this. So let me show you the before shot, and then when I wake up in the morning, I'll turn the camera on and let you see how much is risen. So I'm going to put a wet, um, damp towel over it. And oh, the other thing that I did. Um, on bread because I switched bowls. I had that big red bowl. I just put it into my bread bowl. I just got this and I forget that I have it, but this is the bread, the bowl that I want to use. And so for me, I'm going to pop this on a heat mat to help it just with the temperature in my house overnight will be a little bit cooler than it is now. And so again, I don't time the six to eight hours. Basically, I just do it before I go to bed. I get up in the morning and it's done its thing. So it could be eight hours, 10 hours, Somewhere along in that, you want it to kind of double in size. So it's just going to hang out here till in the morning. I'll meet you back in the morning or tomorrow and let you see the next step. Hey, y'all, I'm back. It's the next morning. I want to show you how the bread has risen. So, voila. Remember how small it was? And again, this is just one loaf, so that's why it's not to the top of the thing. But you can see it's more than doubled in size. So here's the next step. We're going to roll it out into a loaf. Y'all, I'm so sorry. I thought I had pressed record and I didn't. Okay, let me try to recreate what I did. Basically, it had risen <laughs> up to here. I'm so sorry. It had risen to up to like halfway. I dumped it out onto a piece of parchment paper that was lightly floured. I made it into a rectangle and then I just rolled it up into a loaf. I'm so sorry you didn't see me, but basically that's what the loaf looks like now in the pan. And we're going to cover it with a damp towel and let it rise. Okay. That's our finished loaf of bread. Um, I took it out of the oven right at 40 minutes, let it sit in the pan for about five minutes. And then I put it on the cooling rack to let it finish cooling. I found that if you leave it in the pan, to me, it gets soggy on the bottom. So you want to go ahead and transfer it pretty immediately to a cooling rack and let it finish cooling there. And then from there, you can put it in a bread bag and you are good to go. Okay, so now we have a loaf of sourdough bread. It took, like I said, 40 minutes in the oven. I'm going to let it cool. Once it's completely cool, I'll put it in a cute little bread bag and tie it up. It'll stay good on your counter. I would say for up to a week after that, remember it doesn't have preservatives in it. So it's not going to last on your counter and definitely without molding. So typically we eat ours in about five days or so. There's been a time where it, it gets to about a week. It gets a little bit more um, hard on the inside. It's still good, but usually after a week, we're on to the next loaf of bread or um, 
um, usually getting rid of it and making croutons, bread crumbs, something like that. So it's a great alternative if you have some stomach issues because sourdough can be really good for your gut, for your digestion. It's a prebiotic. So certainly um, if that's an option or something you want to explore, I would encourage you to do that. Also, um, one is not, I guess, better than another. With yeast bread, you know that you can wake up one morning and say, hey, I want bread. You can have bread in like three, you know, three to four hours. With sourdough, you have to definitely be more intentional, more planful, um, because it is a longer process. But it also only involves two ingredients to get your sourdough started, which is flour and water. So for many of you, I hope that this kind of gave you the push that you needed. If you struggle with the sourdough starter itself, then make sure that you refer back to my video where I walk through how to do a sourdough starter, but also put your questions down below. And also let me know if you guys would be interested in me selling dehydrated sourdough starter. Like if you don't want to go through the process of starting your own, you're over it and you just want to buy it, then let me know because I might be making that available in the new year. But the most important thing is that I'm learning skills and hopefully showing you skills where you can sustain and feed your family. This is one more thing we can learn how to do without having to go to the grocery store. So for me now, I have um, skills in sourdough and I also have skills in yeast bread. So if we need bread, we can make it happen. And that's what it's all about is increasing your skills and getting better on this homestead journey. Remember, it's all a journey. Let's grow together. I'll see you next time, friend.